Welcome, brave adventurers. Get ready to embark on an epic journey as we dive into the captivating world of Call of Dragon. In this video, we're delving deep into the heart of Chapter 2 game story, where new challenges and mysteries await. Enjoy watching the tale unfold and may the dragons favor you on this adventure. Let the journey begin. Isn't that the town that was destroyed by a volcano? Yeah, but they built a village on top of the ruins ages ago. Now the villagers make their living selling fireworks. They just kept the old name. You really believe the old volcano mess, Bacar? Everybody knows the real story. The Waltz of the Fire Dancer. Right, right, the Fire Dancer. Number one on Craig and Spike's list of must-see dragons. The Waltz of the Fire Dancer. Now there's a tale that brings a tear to the eye of any practitioner of the explosive arts. Yeah, from Polaris Travels. On the night disaster struck, it was the fireworks festival, the biggest party of the year. Travelers would flock from all over to Mars, and among them was the great adventurer, Polari. Before the show started, he went to a hillside outside the town to find a place with a good view. But, the first fireworks rose into the sky. Polari ran toward the nearest cave, as if guided by a premonition. Premonition? My shapely green arse. Probably just needed to take a leak. What? Oh, where'd you hear that one, bomber boy? Goblin storytellers are about as reliable as their second-hand goods. And then, Kella, what happened? I'm already bored, Half Pint. Let me tell it. The fireworks festival had an unexpected guest. A dragon. As the first fireworks leapt into the sky, the people below watched in awe as they changed shape, came together, and descended. One by one, their cheers turned to screams, and their screams turned to explosions. The whole town was turned into one super incredible fireworks display. Uh, not sure about the details, but Bomber Boys got it more or less right. Our great adventurer escaped certain death by hiding in a cave. He was the sole survivor. He wrote about it in his journal. I'm pretty sure everyone agrees the volcano's the most likely explanation. Back when Polaris Travels came out, it was a total flop. Now it's only become popular recently of the increase in dragon worship. <laughs> Typical dragon dinar. Anyway, since they borrowed the pearl, that means they must have come under a dragon attack. Just like the one Polari saw. I can't wait. Norwell is the site of one of the most beautiful explosions in history. And I'll bet you that village is hiding some kind of super secret recipe. Horse, horse! That sorceress wants to fight us! Cha Cha! Where's your sense of romance? That wasn't a challenge, it was an invitation. Although, didn't those villagers say. It's the sorceress who brought the fire dancer here. 
I just spoke with a couple of them. They said she's been in Norwell for over a month now. At first, she said she was just here to see the sights. But then she started dragging one of the villagers around with her to be her guide, and asking all the village children about the story of the Fire Dancer. Then, thirty days after she got here, a red dragon appeared. Norwell was engulfed in flames. If the villagers hadn't dug out an underground shelter in advance, they would have faced the same tragedy as their ancestors did 300 years ago. You managed to find all that out. Hmm, nice work, Bakar. Uh, looks to me like our sorceress has got something to do with the dragon. <laughs> uh, are we sure we want to go looking for her? She could control the flames with just her hands. Didn't even need a staff. Power like that has to come from deep in your blood. There is no other way. If she turns out to be our enemy, we'd better be ready for her. Of course we're gonna go find her, half pint. What? You scared of a little fire? My bombs will make her pyromancy look like a party trick! Oh, hello, dear. So nice to see you at last. Though I didn't expect you to bring your whole entourage. I was going to tell you all my secrets, but now you'll have to choose. I have one secret I like, and one secret I hate. Which would you like to hear first? Uh, wait, uh, M Madam Sorceress? Uh, what we really want to know is, what's the deal with you and the Fire Dancer? Oh, sweetie, if you won't play by the rules, you'll have to be punished. But you know what? I don't care for rules either. As a reward for breaking the rules, I'll tell you the secret I hate. Ta-da! What could this be? Hmm? Oh, go on, I'll tell you. The Pearl of Flame. Come to think of it, I really should thank you all for giving me the opportunity. <laughs> Just the thought of those villagers running around like headless chickens really warms my heart. Aye, that pearl belongs to us! Or, well, to my employer! Your employer? Who might that be? He's a tree ant! Right, question time's over. Hand over the pearl! Or... <laughs> Sorry, there's usually an or... The... No need to rush. Just waiting for you to finish. Ah, uh, Spike, she's underestimating us! I told you manners are useless! Listen up! Hand over the pearl or else! We'll snap off your arms and make them into wizard staves! Now wait! Firework tubes! Then we'll use them to celebrate over the sound of your screams! Ooh, not bad, not bad. That's exactly the kind of temper I expected from you, bomber boy. I hope someone with such an explosive personality is not scared of a little fire. Oh, no, 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 no! Looks like those two pyromaniacs have got a hot date! Froggy, let's find you somewhere to hide. Ugh. How could you let Bomber Boy bully me like that? 
Look what you've done to me. Covered in filth. Oh, how inelegant. I've had just about enough of this. Take me to my chaperone. I dare say he's much better company than a lot of you. Did my last bomb scramble your brains? We've got no idea what you're talking about. Oh, right. My bad. His name is Draven. We don't know anybody called Draven. Wait a minute. Ain't that the guy who borrowed the pearl from Catalpa? So you do know the old fellow after all. Isn't he just the sweetest? He makes for a wonderful chaperone. Really knows his stuff. A true gentleman. Oh, and I just love the way he gives those villagers the willies. Soon the dragons will awaken in droves, and the flames of destruction will sweep across the realm. Ah, Trevin's always saying things like that to them. It's just precious. He prophesied a dragon attack. I suppose you could say that. Not that it matters. They all thought it was nonsense. By the time I got here, Draven was already going from door to door, trying to persuade the villagers to dig an underground shelter. Of course, nobody paid him the slightest attention. We heard there was a dragon attack here not long ago. But I thought everybody only survived thanks to an underground shelter. Ahem, <clears throat> thanks to me, more like. If you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. That's why I hired some mercenaries to dig the shelter. Of course, I only did it for the sake of my dear chaperone. Poor fellow works so hard. I figured he deserved not to burn to death. That's not why you're stopping them from being healed, is it? They just needed to learn a little lesson. I always loved that line from Polari's Travels. People forget their pain once the scars have faded. I don't remember that line. Don't doubt me, dear. I can show you the very page where it's written. I've got an authentic copy with me right here. Straight from the library of the Royal Court. There's even a Dongrad Academy seal on the title page. It was my favorite book as a child. The binding on this one is exquisite. Oh, where is my copy of Polari's Travels? How are we supposed to know? Are you sure you had it on you? Oh, yes. I remember now. I found the most gorgeous little box not far from here, and I thought I'd put the book in there for safekeeping. Then I buried the box somewhere to make sure I didn't lose it. But it's been so rainy recently, it'll be filthy. Ugh, I can't bear the thought of dirtying these dainty little hands. You do that for me. Oh, I'm touched. Hmm. And there I thought your love for me was unconditional. <sighs> you drive a hard bargain, but we have a deal. And I don't want to see so much as a scratch on that book. Clear? One copy of Polari's Travels, as promised. Brought it back safe and sound. Nice work. Huh? That is... Why in the world does it smell like that? You know what that gorgeous little box was, right? You made off with a bloody darkling chest. You're lucky they didn't tear that book to pieces. Well, that little book ought to be one of their most prized possessions. Forget money or power. Fairy tales are the most priceless things we can have in this sad, worthless world. What are you all looking at me like that for? I know what will lighten the mood. You know, Trevin told me he used to read me stories. <laughs> oh, 
Well, I thought it was funny. How could he ever have told me stories as a child? <laughs> Old Drevin used to be a high scholar of Dawngrad Academy. Honestly, it sounds like one of the most boring jobs in the world. Well, anyway, a sorceress always keeps her promises. It's time I paid the old boy a visit. Come on. Maybe we can pick you up a sense of humor along the way. Here's your precious little pearl. Thanks, hon. I mean, thank you, Madam Sorceress. <laughs> You're welcome. You know, you should have mentioned it earlier. I would have just given it to you. Of course. Trevor has no more use for the damn thing anyway. They all thought he was mad. But when a dragon comes knocking at their door, guess who they suddenly ask for help? Then, after Drevin went to all the trouble of getting the pearl and curing their burns, they snatched it away from him. Said they needed to be sure that the pearl was in the hands of someone reliable. So you decided to get in their way? I wanted to take matters into my own hands. But Drevin said that everyone has their faults. Ugh, oh, the old fool. Ever the committed follower of Leosa. Little did he know they'd long stopped needing to use the pearl for anything. All they knew was that they'd got their hands on something valuable, and they had no desire to give it back. But, uh, you still listen to him? <sighs> Nonsense. I felt sorry for the old goat, muttering to himself all day. Ha! <laughs> I bet the villagers are still looking high and low for the pearl. I'm going to go point and laugh at them. Care to join me? Oh, that's the alarm bell. What kind of new species of monster is this? Judging from the direction, they must have run here from the volcano. What bizarre looking creatures. In touch with Drevin, Chief. He's treating the wounded villagers. I've sent some soldiers to help him. They'll make sure nobody tries to steal the pearl again. I didn't know Abyss Lizards could self-destruct like that. Even though we kept them outside the village, the whole place has gone up in flames! Maybe this place is just cursed to always be on fire. I mean, I quite like it. But those namby-pamby villagers probably want to do something about it. Hmm. It only takes being burnt once to develop a fear of fire. They stole the pearl because they wanted to have something up their sleeve the next time around. Sounds like they really need the pearl. Oh, think about it, my dear halfling. There are plenty of other places in Tamaris that need the pearl far more than they do. If they won't learn to save themselves, there's not a magical goo in the world that can help them. An excess of sympathy can be a dangerous thing. But things are still pretty bad here. We can't just ignore them. Hun, me and Dronky are gonna help the villagers gather supplies. It's the least we can do. There's a whole lot of rebuilding to be done. Ugh, do we have to? Oh, fine, fine. If it'll get us out of here faster, I'll help too. No, we're not! So, first you help them fight, and now you're digging out the pearl to help them again. You've got Drevin healing their boo-boos, and you're helping them to rebuild the village. Is this some kind of religious thing? Ugh, you're not all Leosa freaks, are you? Oh, not you too. Ugh, whatever. Be as goody-goody as you like. But let's get one thing straight. You won't get me to join in. 
Looks like things are all going smoothly, Chief. They've uh, put the fires out, and Draven's treated the last of the burn victims. Got the pearl for you right here. You know, Lily said she wasn't gonna help, but there she is. I was just passing by, out on an evening walk. Anyway, enough of that. Look, isn't my new wand beautiful? Hey, fireworks! Did you make it yourself? Straight from a fireworks shop. They were so scared of another incident that they couldn't even bear to look at the thing. If I hadn't intervened, the whole stash would have been thrown straight into the lake. Huh, ridiculous. At this rate, the villagers will be too scared of fire to even cook dinner. Fireworks is the only business they have in this town, dear. Do you reckon if we set off another round of fireworks, the fire dancer might come back? Hey, hey, don't tempt fate! The look on your face, my dear halfling. Oh, by the way, I've got another secret for you. I rather like this one. <laughs> there it is. Now don't tell a soul. Thank you, all of you. The pearls are together again, just in time. Ugh, here we go again. Since the night of burning stars, I have felt my connection to the world tree weakening. And the power of the darkness spreading like a plague that cannot be contained. Catalpa, not to interrupt, but shouldn't you heal your friend first? Good point. My memory is not what it used to be. I have forgotten what is most important. I will bring it to Gilores. The healing process was a success. All that was left was a drop of the black dragon's blood. It has congealed solid. My friend also asked me to give you this. He calls it a glyphograph. It is your reward. Oi, hang on! I thought the pearls were our reward. Mm, worry not, good goblin. The pearls are yours. As is the glyphograph. Galoris is a genius. This object is quite the masterwork. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, the look on your face, Palmer boy. <laughs> oh, that's too much. <laughs> All that you experience can thus be recorded. Should you encounter the black dragon, use this and bring me its picture. I saw it on the night of burning stars. Yes, Galoris captured it with his glyphograph. That Craig and Spock? That's my super boom barrel. How is that the first thing you notice? I got a psycho talpa. This thing's pretty cool. I'll get you your picture, but it won't come cheap. I don't work for exposure. Naturally. And your lordship will assist him? I, I say who goes on this mission. Hey, half point, look over here. Oh, oh. <laughs> you look ridiculous. Hey, Craig, let me try. I want to send one back home. Let them see I'm doing okay. All right, all right. Everybody get close together. When I say boom, you smile, okay? Catalpa, crouch down a bit, will you? Wait a minute. How am I supposed to get in the picture? Boom! 